Hey everyone, welcome to a very eagerly anticipated mm -hmm. video comparison of the Kobo Glow HD versus the Kobo Aura. Yes. This is Kobo's six inch product line right here. The Aura has been out for some time. The Glow HD is not available at all until the end of April. Yeah, at another least. month. Yeah. So let's take a look at the specs because this is very important. I'm not going to talk about all the specs, but I'll tell you about the most exciting ones. The resolution, first and foremost, is the most important aspect here. We have on the Kobo Aura, we have 1014 by 768. F for its time, it was very good. The Kobo Glow HD is 300 ppi. The resolution is 1448 by 1072. Like this is only 212 PPI, this is 300. So on paper, that may, may not make a lot of sense to a lot of people, but today we're just gonna look at real life conditions, opening up books, comparing them directly, and seeing is this, if you have this, is it a viable upgrade to this? Right. That's, that's what we're looking at today. But before we get there, some of the hardware is quite noticeably different. Let's take a look. This is a really cool e-reader because it's a flush screen and bezel. They kind of went away from that with the new product line like the Kobo Aura H2O and the new Glow HD. This one is very nice because it has a nice uh, hard rubber plastic feel to it. This one is multiple pieces so you get the front screen and then another piece on the side. So. Uh, it's all, it all comes down to what you want your e-reader to look like and what you want to stare at every day. The backs are a little bit different. They go with their asymmetrical design with these uh, cool grooved lines. Kobo logo in the back. This one's the first Kobo e-reader with Rakuten on the back because it got bought out a while ago. Yeah, the Kobo here is like black on black and this is like gray on black. Right. So this is very <clears throat> pronounced. This is very minimalist. Uh, this new Kobo Glow HD has a hard rubber plastic with this wavy perforated look. Uh, it offers a lot of grip but a lot of fingerprinting because of the material used. And we found that like dust actually gets inside of like the little gets holes hot, in the yeah. grip. Uh, on the bottom of the Kobo Glow HD you have the micro USB port along with a uh, hard reset button. You also have the power button on the top, nothing on the sides. On the Kobo Aura, we have the power button, it's a slider, we have a glow light button, nothing on the sides, and on the bottom we have a hard reset, a micro USB, and an SD card. It is important to note that the new Kobo Glow HD does not have an SD card slot. The last three or four generations of Kobo e-readers have all featured dynamic home screens, which I find very appealing. Whatever you buy, open, or do on your e-reader, it tends to always change here. So I've established a new collection, it appeared here. I opened up a web browser, a shortcut appears here, and that allows you for more easy access. If you look at the Nook or Kindle e-readers, their home screens are pretty well the equivalent of your library and whatever function that you commonly access you just sometimes have to jump between two or three different sub menus so with reading settings things are have been moved around a little bit a little bit of a renovation right so they both have one of two pages there's a lot of options here in page two but there's only one option here on page two. It's more efficiently uh, remastered on the new one. I think so. And that, that's a great way of putting it. I think that people will always just be on page one to do everything. There's really no reason to go to page two. Whereas with the Aura, there's a lot of options here on the second page. We have a uh, little bit differences in the refresh settings, one through six, and then on the reading settings on the old one, we have one through chapter. Yeah. and. The reason why the new Kobo did only six pages is to eliminate ghosting. Yeah. Both of these devices have four gigs, but when you take them out of the box for the first time with all the preloaded content and operating system, you get about three gigs. You can get around that with the SD card here and manage it with like third party programs like Caliber and right. things like that. Uh, that is a non issue with the Glow. It does not have an SD card. So you'll have to be very intelligent on your side loaded content. At first glance, without doing anything, I would say that the new Kobo Glow HD 
has a whiter has a more white I say background so. it's more indicative of real paper i also found and it's using the same text most almost the exact same settings that the fonts are clear and more pronounced right i would say so as well and we'll do a good test right now just to show you guys the true curvature of all of the letters is we'll go to the maximum font size so you can really tell by looking at o's and m's and anything curved the o will be completely circular here you get a little bit of blurriness around all the curved letters so it's really uh evident in studio here and this will also give you a good white space here that this is a lot more white than that this is has kind of a dark gray to it so i have been i totally a lot agree of advances and and I remember when this first came out, we're like, wow, this really blows away anything else that Kobo has done in the past. Yeah. And, you know, within a year and a half or so, um, this has really stepped up. Kobo's really stepped up their game. Right. I'm, I'm really impressed. You can see the refreshes on this are more seamless. This one grays out every single time. So it kind of It dots. does. Yeah, it has these little, little dots everywhere. Um, it, it, it kind of looks blurry. This one looks a lot more crisp. Uh, it does. Just everything about this right now is just a lot better in quality. In terms of the reading experience, you saw the font settings. Uh, we have different ways to change the font, line spacing, margins. All this changes live. We also have justification, which either justifies it in to the left or just centers all the text. We also have advanced, and this allows you to change the font weight, the font size, and the font style so you get what it would look like before and after and you can click apply to apply those settings but this is just an example so we will not apply those yeah type genius really appeals to the advanced users uh, keep in mind too the one thing that power users like about Kobo is that you are locked into the default fonts that they have right. and they do actually have more stock fonts than the Kindle Voyage or the Nook Glowlight does but you could actually sideload in your own fonts so purchase fonts online, whatever. You, there's really no limit to as many fonts as you can add to these devices. And Kobo is the only brand to really support uh, the importing of fonts. They are using the same keyboard, which is an unconventional gridded QWERTY. Most QWERTYs are staggered. The Q and the A will be kind of positioned diagonal. Oh, wow, that's, that's, he, that's great. He didn't just say that. That's oh, great. yes, he did. Uh, the keyboards are a little bit needing to getting used to. <laughs> we also have... Uh, long presses for uh, looking in book Wikipedia and Google and we also have Facebook uh, share and the, that will remain consistent across the Kobo Glow HD as well. It seemed to me that when you're kind of jumping around to different options here things fired up quicker than it did here. A little bit yeah it is just a more advanced piece of tech. So we'll do some pinch and zooms first to show you how you can change this around. You notice that the pinch and zooming is much quicker on the Glow HD than it is the Aura. We'll go to about that zoom level and take a look at what these guys look like in terms of quality. So this rendered quicker? Yeah. And does it final stage of rendering second? And uh, that was slowly lagging behind? Yeah. But uh, the quality is very good. You'll notice once again, the white space is more white. This is more kind of tanny gray. Uh, it's like cloudy, like yeah. misty. This is more crisp. This is just a little bit fuzzy. fuzzy and blurry, but that's just because as you go up from the glow to the aura to the glow HD, it just gets better and better. So we'll go back out to full screen. So you can see that it's kind of hard to read. So you want to get, you really want to utilize the pinch and zoom, which Kobo does very well. Now there's a couple settings here. We have quick nav, so this will quickly navigate to any of the pages you want to go to, and these settings will remain consistent. We have zoom level manually, fit to width, fit to height, and landscape and portrait orientation. It's because this does not have a gyroscope. Mm. We also have a couple settings here: dictionary, reading settings. We get an additional search in. Uh, we get an additional annotations on the um, the Kobo Glow HD. We've looked at PDFs. What do you think? What, you know, where are you swaying? What, what are your thoughts? I think it's uh, it's give and take because in PDF, faster is better. So this one is much faster. It loads faster. It renders faster. This one is slower. However, mm. it's 100 MB. So you put that on here, 
you got no problem. You can put a 64 gig card in here. You put that on here, it takes up 3% of the entire hard drive. Yeah. So, and you can't expand it. So, you know, you got to be careful. Like Mike said, you got to be careful what you load on this. We look at price and fundamentally the Glo uh, the Kobo Glow HD is a very good investment. Yeah, I'd say so. We're looking at 129 Canadian for this. It comes out at the end of April. Yeah. It should be in major Canadian bookstores and electronic shops at the first week of May. And it, even then, it's significantly cheaper than the Aura. It's significantly cheaper than the H2O right. in terms of price. So it's more affordable. It's employing better, you know, better, it's just better. and. With the one thing that I really like about these two Kobo e-readers is that their ecosystem, they have more books than Amazon does, yep. and they're in more markets than Amazon is. So anybody could buy this Glow HD or the Aura in any market in the world and buy books without restrictions. Right. And a lot of other stores restrict you to only certain markets, only available maybe in the US or in the UK, some markets in, in Europe, but the Kobo, it's, it's a truly global force to be reckoned with. So if you have the Aura Peter, would you encourage people to upgrade to the Glow HD? I think so. Going from the Glow to the Aura, uh, it's a significant jump, but then going from the Aura to the Glow HD, it's even that much more. So uh, for the price, the Kobo Glow HD is priced so well. It is right down there with right, the. it's the perfect amount you want to spend on an e-reader. You don't want to spend $250 on an e-reader. You want to spend 100 something, and that's where the Kobo Glow HD sits. All right. If you want to learn more about the Kobo Glow HD, stay tuned to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodyreader. We're going to be comparing this guy against virtually every other mainstream e-reader on the market. If you want to see an unboxing, a review video, make sure your bookmark is locked and your homepage set to our YouTube channel. You got it. And make sure that you visit our website, goodyreader.com, for the hands-on review of the Kobo Glow and get our a very comprehensive look at everything that the sea reader is capable of uh, with no punches pulled thank you for watching everyone we really appreciate it for goodyreader.com my name is michael my name is peter everybody take care